Hello, I'm Mark Pollitt and welcome to Understanding Partitions. One of the most important things for uh, forensic examiners to understand is how hard drives and storage media uh, actually store the data that they hold. And <clears throat> we take for granted uh, how it works in everyday life and in normal IT. But for the forensic examiner, it really determines whether they get all the data, whether they get the data that they think that they're getting, and so, and also that they can understand what data it is they have gotten. So this presentation will talk about how this data storage works. As I say, we tend to take for granted the notion that um, we seem to magically go from a physical hard drive that you see on the left here to what we normally see as our file system, which uh, you can see a Windows variant uh, on the right. Uh, and as we'll find out later, that's not actually how it looks, but that's the representation that we understand and we uh, look for data using that data structure. But <clears throat> merely looking at uh, the uh, Windows Explorer doesn't allow us to really see what's on that hard drive or to see how or understand how that data is stored on there. So I want to back up just a little bit and discuss that process in a little bit more detail. Um, the first issue is that when they manufacture a hard drive, you can liken it to the notion of building uh, a very, very large uh, warehouse on a single floor. And uh, imagine that this warehouse is uh, um, a mile square. And when the builders build it, there's just a concrete slab. And otherwise, it's just a big open space. Well, being that large, we have to have some way of organizing the material on there. And the fact that it's just sitting on the floor um, really doesn't uh, efficiently use that storage space. Uh, so um, that picture, as I've, as I've described it in your mind, this large open warehouse with just a flat f floor is kind of analogous to the hard drive when it comes out of the factory. You know, pretend it's a, a, a one terabyte Seagate drive. Uh, the computer says, you know, there's this big warehouse out there, uh, but I have no idea what's in it or how to access anything in there. I just know that there's this big warehouse out there. And if you connect a, a drive that has not been formatted, although most of them these days will come actually formatted, but if you were to get an unformatted drive, um, you would connect it to the, uh, the computer and it would say, um, I see that there's a device out there, but I can't read anything off of it. And uh, the drive uh, is, uh, is actually got some uh, information on it, at what's called low-level formatted, uh, that will allow uh, uh, the operating system to actually write to it, but it doesn't have any real uh, uh, organization. If you wanted to organize uh, material in this warehouse, you'd need a couple things. The first thing is you'd need some system to keep track of uh, what's coming in there, what's going out, and you need some system that would allow you to organize where things were in that one mile by one mile uh, warehouse. And uh, so that initial uh, formatting, that initial uh, description of where things are uh, is uh, a process that we do uh, in uh, in hard drives in a, a similar way. When we uh, initialize a drive, we create a record up at the top that's called the master boot record. Uh, and the master boot record says, hi, I'm a drive and this is how big I am. And it contains a data structure in there called a partition table. And that partition table says, I have uh, the following areas laid out on the floor of my giant warehouse here. 
It's as though somebody went in there with paint and drew an area and said this is area A and this is area B, etc. The computer will then be able to read that uh, device and will say, okay, I see that there is a hard drive out there and the hard drive is this big, but I don't know what's in the hard drive and I can't really see uh, what's available uh, in that hard drive. The structure, the boundaries of the structure that you create is called the physical partition. And for the most part, the physical partition, including the master boot record, uh, is the whole of the hard drive. I say it's the whole of the hard drive, but that's really a fallacy. In reality, hard drives are larger than what you see and what it says on the label. There is additional space there that is used for a number of reasons, not the least of which is if you have a bad area of storage on there, the computer will automatically detect that and replace that <coughs> and use another uh, storage area uh, from its area of spares. Uh, and so there are also some other structures uh, located on the physical drive uh, when it's low level uh, uh, formatted, uh, one of which is called the host protected area, which will be talked about in some other lecture. But uh, essentially, we can think of the hard drive in its physical partition as being the whole of the space on the physical object. Uh, and so that is our physical partition. But that doesn't help us store data. And if we go there, the, the uh, uh, the computer will say, I don't know how to read and write data. So we have to do something called formatting. And uh, so when we format the drive, uh, we then say to the master boot record, and we write an entry into the partition table and say, okay, from this area, from this address to this address in the physical drive, I'm going to store a uh, fat 32 data area, or an NTFS data area, or an EXT2 data area. And it starts here and it ends here. And it writes that entry in the partition table. And then it goes out and it writes a logical boot record to the uh, area that uh, has been reserved for this logical drive. And by the way, I apologize for the, uh, the white letters uh, on the uh, slide, uh, but if you can imagine that the, in the middle of that sand-colored uh, slide, it says logical boot record. And then it has a data area within that logical drive, uh, which it can store data. And were you to mount this on a computer, it would say, not only is there a drive zero out there, but I see this NTFS or FAT32 drive label C. And so now we have a logical drive that is contained within a physical drive. By the way, as a side note, floppy disks are unique, although you're not likely to see many of them will actually be using some floppy disk images for some exercises. But floppy disks are unique in that their physical drives and their logical drives are exactly the same. In fact, they don't have a master boot record at all. The only thing they have is a logical boot record but they are the exception. Normally hard drives will have a physical partition and one or more logical partitions located within that. In fact, we'll see in this slide how you can have a physical drive zero, all right, the same one terabyte Seagate drive containing multiple logical drives. Each of the logical drives are one entry in the master boot record but then in turn, or in the, in the partition table within the master boot record, but then each of them have a logical drive, which each of, each of those logical drives in turn have their own logical boot record. We'll be talking more about these structures in a later lecture, but it's important at this point to understand the difference. Because when you see these two drives, if you're copying all of the data from the C drive, Obviously, you're only getting that section of data that is reserved for that logical drive. You're not getting the information on the D drive, but you also may not be getting any of the data that is on the physical drive, but not contained within the logical drive C. Similarly, 
if you were to copy off the data in the D drive, you would not only not get the data from the C drive, but you also would not get any of the other data that's located on physical drive zero, but not contained in drive D. Now, hopefully that's not too confusing, but it's important to realize that if you ask for and you get data from a logical drive, you're only getting data from within that space. If you want all of the data on an entire hard drive, then you have to get the physical drive. If you get the physical drive, it will contain all of the logical drives within that physical drive. And so, it's important to understand the physical drive contains logical structures. The physical drives are usually labeled things like drive 0, drive 1 in the Linux world, dev, SDA, uh, SDB, etc. Logical drives are normally the parts of the drive that contain data, although data can be written to physical areas not within logical drives. That's a way to hide data. But generally speaking, the data is contained in logical drives, and we normally view these logical drives with drive letters like C and D and E, etc., uh, or to a particular mount point if we're looking at the Linux or Unix variants. Well, that's a quick and dirty on the difference between logical and physical partitions. And I hope you found it useful. Until next time, have a good day.